This is a new Pivot Firebird 29. It's got 170 mil of travel up front and 162 millimeters of rear travel. Combined with 29 inch wheels, this is a Enduro World Series monster truck. The Firebird 29 has a 65 degree head tube angle, a 74.5 degree seat tube angle. It's got a very short 431 millimeter chainstay, which is the same on all sizes from small to extra large. The small frame starts at 428 millimeters in the reach and goes up to 495 for the extra large. I'm six foot one and I chose the extra large and it seems to fit me well. The stack height and the head tube length also increases by 10 millimeters per size. So taller riders shouldn't need to use too many stem spacers or taller handlebars to get the riding position they need. You can downsize to 27 plus wheels or even 27.5. With 29 inch wheels, you can use either geometry position using the flip chip. The lower setting gives you the 65 degree head tube angle, or you can flip it over into the high position, which raises the bottom bracket by five millimeters and steepens the head tube angle as well as the seat tube angle. The Firebird 29 uses a DW link Dave Weagle suspension system. There's a short lower link just above the bottom bracket and a secondary link on the seat tube which co-rotate in the same direction to drive the shock. The design uses position sensitive anti-squat to combat pedal bob. In the sag zone you shouldn't need to use the lockout switch or the compression dial or add excessive compression damping to give you the support you need when pedaling. It's got the 36 fork with a Grip2 damper. It also comes with a Float X2 shock. The 2019 X2 has a much bigger bottom out bumper, so it really smooths things out when you hit the end of the travel. Pivot have also gone with a 44 millimeter offset. Most forks have a 51 millimeter offset in the 29 inch version, but the idea here is to use a shorter offset, which will calm down the steering and offset some of the effects of a slack head angle. The Firebird 29 also uses the ironically named Superboost Plus 157mm rear hub spacing. Pivots say that this allows them to create a shorter chainstay with increased tyre clearance as well as increasing rear wheel stiffness. Pivots supplied us with the top of the line Pro X01 model. This bike comes with a Kashima coated Fox suspension, black Fox transfer post and an X01 drivetrain. It also comes with a pivot carbon handlebar, pivot stem, padlock grips. It's also supplied with Reynolds carbon wheels laced to industry nine hubs. Despite being the only extra large size bike in this category on test. The Firebird 29 was the second lightest bike after the Scott Ransom. Uh, the DW link seems to really firm up under power. There's not much, not much pedal bob. This bike really, when you stand up, feels more efficient than you expect. Let's talk about the position. Uh, for me, I'm a little bit shorter than Paul. I found the climbing position pretty good, although it's a 74.5 degree C2 bangle. It's not as steep as we're seeing. Um, but for me, I was, I was able to get along with it. But for you, you're a little bit taller. You find your weight a little off the back. Yeah, I think it's a combination of two things. It's not just the seat angle. You also need to look at the chainstay length. It's a very short 432 mil chainstay on this bike. So if you think of a triangle between the bottom bracket, uh, the rear axle and your seat position, the higher that seat goes, the further over the rear axle you're going to go and then that's going to lead to more weight on the rear axle, a lighter front end, maybe a little bit of vagueness when climbing. I'm just super comfortable from the outset. I can jump on it and I can ride into pretty much any terrain. feel comfortable, don't get too much pressure on my lower back. Plenty of room to maneuver around um, but the bike, even though it's so long, it doesn't feel as if it's hard to move around. It's pretty light and just responds really well. We talked about short chain stays. Um, you know, if you're a racer guy and just want to plow through everything as fast as possible, that does give it a little bit different handling. But for someone that wants to just hop and pop and play around on a pretty big bike, I like that part about yeah. it. Longer chain stays could potentially add even more stability to this bike, make it even more formidable on the descent. Small bump sensitivity is really good. Plenty of mid-stroke support. And with a new 2019 Float X2 shock that's got the upgraded bigger size bottom out bumper, it's pretty much a bottomless feel. I thought from the off it was a really good climber. Overall, it's a great spec, pedals really well, can take on all but the really biggest of hits. It's light, it's got good geometry for most riders. 
pretty slack, pretty aggressive, and it looks fantastic. We've got a lot of people coming up to us in the park and commenting on the bike and saying it looked great, asking us what it was. Nice to see the Grip 2 damper there. And with a new 2019 Flotex 2 shock. For 162 millimeters of travel, it's a lot of travel, um, but it manages it really well. And the one other nice feature about the frame is it uses a straight 1.5 inch head tube that opens up a lot of potential. One thing I'd like to try on this bike would be moving the flip chip on the swing arm into the higher position, which would give a bit more ground clearance when pedaling and steepen the seat angle a little. But at the same time, we could put in an angle set to lose one or two degrees possibly uh, from the head angle. Making these changes, we might get a bike that's even better on the downs and better on the ups. And you could get this bike to have a 63 degree head angle. That's the same as what we see on a World Cup downhill race bike. So that's probably a pretty fun time. One arguable downside of the Firebird 29 is the lack of a bottle cage. This is a big problem for dehydrated Americans. For Europeans who know good coffee and cafe breaks every hour or so of the ride, this is no issue. The bike came with a Maxxis Minion DHF in the front, DHR2 in the rear, but it had XO casing. And out of the box, spending that extra money to get a, a tougher tire just doesn't seem like something you should need to do. Um, Paul got some flats, I've got some flats with the same tires. Also the handlebar seemed to, to be quite stiff. It was also very wide, it was 820 mil wide. Uh, including the grips to start with. With a padlock grip system, you need a special saw guide to cut the handlebar in a specific angle. <sighs> For me, it just seems like too much hassle. Yeah. If yeah. I want to change my grips, I just want to change my grips and go right in. The Reynolds wheels, they're just a little bit stiffer than we wanted. The frame itself is really stiff, so when you add on carbon wheels on there, it can make it a little more stiff than we thought was necessary, just get a little more feedback. Probably some just nice aluminum wheels, which is the stock configuration, probably the way to go. What else should potential buyers consider about the Firebird 29? Well, for one thing, it has Pivot Super Boost plus 157 spacing. It's a mouthful, um, but basically what that means is they've used what was traditionally downhill spacing for the rear wheel in an effort to make it stiffer, allow them to have short chain stays, plenty of tire clearance. And so if you have a stack of spare wheels, there's a chance they probably won't work with your new bike. Overall, it's a light bike. It's got a lot of capability. You can do anything from all day trail rides to Enduro World Series, downhill tracks bike part days. It's fully modern and whatever you want to toss at it, it can take it. So there you have it. That's the Pivot Firebird 29. Stay tuned for more reviews from the Pink Bike Field Test.